If you're a commodity, you're being judged primarily on price. So that means that you either compete in the race to the bottom to keep lowering your prices or hope becomes the uh, sales strategy. And those are not <laughs> winning hands. So the idea is that when you have a book, uh, you're able to demonstrate your authority. Well, hey there, and welcome to a brand new episode of Delivering Marketing Joy. I am your host, Kirby Hosman, and joining me today is a brand new rock star. He is a New York Times bestselling ghostwriter. I'm so excited to dig into the topic today. Michael Levin, thanks for joining me. Hey, Kirby. Thanks for having me on. Pleasure. Absolutely. So let's sort of start sort of 10,000 feet, I guess. Why do you think business people specifically should write their own books? Sure. There's something called the commodity trap, and that is that the Internet gives buyers so many choices today that mm, yeah. uh, people who have great experience and great wisdom are being judged as commodities. And if you're a commodity, you're being judged primarily on price. So that means that you either compete in the race to the bottom to keep lowering your prices or hope becomes the uh, sales strategy. And those are not <laughs> winning hands. So the idea is that when you have a book, uh, you're able to demonstrate your authority your knowledge base, your intellectual property, your thought leadership, your process. And instead of people looking at you as just one more commodity, they're sort of clamoring to get on your calendar because you're the person. So that's the short answer. No, that's a really good answer. You know, I've, I've, I've been blessed to, to write a couple books and it's, it's, it can be a tough process, but I've never, I'm super curious about the idea of ghostwriting. So like, what does a, you, you've done this and you've been New York times bestselling, uh, uh, ghostwriter. What do ghostwriters do and how do they put the, put a book together like that? Yeah. The short of it is that it's typically not the highest and best use of most people's time to write their own books, even if they enjoy writing, because mm. it's cutting into paid time, it's cutting into family time. So when you have a ghost, it sort of gets the process uh, uh, really uh, uh, down to a minimum of hours of your time. I always tell my clients I only work with people who are too busy to talk to me, because if you, <laughs> you, know, if you aren't that busy, what do you need a book for? And if you are that busy, how are you going to get it done? So my role mm. as the ghost is to come in and first identify with the client, and this typically takes an hour to 90 minutes, who's the audience, whom we're trying to influence, because everything is narrow casting today. We're not mm. talking to all those people out there in book land. We're just talking to the specific market niche that the author already has or wants to get. And then where are they? And where do we want to take them? And what body of knowledge in your head will convince those people to take those next steps with you in life or whatever, because right now, the hardest thing in the world is to get people to trust you when they don't know you. And yeah. everybody's websites look like everybody else's websites. <laughs> so, you know, so that's the first step. And then we spend about an hour per chapter on the phone. So if it's okay. going to be a 150, 150 page book, I need about 12 hours of your time in order to get that done. And an hour a week, everybody's got an hour a week for 12 weeks for something that's super important. So that's that's basically how we do it. Yeah, that's that's really interesting, Michael. Because having having just finished the process of a book, it definitely took me more than twelve hours. More than 12 <laughs> like, hours. Like, so, so that's uh, that's really interesting. Um, now, a little bit off script because this is really interesting to me. So, um, how how many authors can you or how many business people can you work with at a time? And how, like, can you work with a lot of people, or how is it more exclusive? I cannot work with a lot of people. I was actually on Shark Tank. And really? uh, in season three, yeah, I was, I was interviewing the executive producer of the show and he said, uh, for, for, for a client's book. And he said, I want you to appear on the show. And I oh, looked at wow. him like he had two heads. I said, you've got to be kidding me. What I do is not very sexy. It's me in an office typing. He said, yeah. no, it's very sexy. I want you on the show. So I went on the show and, uh, basically, uh, you know, they were all asking me, can you scale? And I said, not beyond a certain point. And they all said, I'm out because, <laughs> you know, there's a certain level of quality. I'm not a fire, no fire hose nozzle, you know, yeah. and I can only do what I do for a limited number of people. And I take on a limited number of projects each year because I'm really good. I've been doing this a long time. I've been involved with over a thousand books at this point, wow. either as editor, publisher, agent, author, ghostwriter, consultant, book planner. And so I, I, I limit my practice, if you will, to people with a positive, positive people with a positive message. Mm. And you know, I have a small team and, 
together we're able to do about 30 or 40 books a year, which is a lot. Yeah, that um, is a lot. But it's not it's not 100 or 200 or 500. I had a prior company and we were doing uh, 120, 130 books a year at the end. And, you know, I'm the talent. I'm not the suit. So it's uh, – it's a little yeah. overwhelming for me, so I'm I'm at I'm in a I'm at a level that's manageable for me, and it really guarantees outstanding results. And the clients are people like hedge fund guys and ladies, and uh, I'm working with the owner of a major league baseball team on his memoir right now. I've got uh, a top uh, a top fashion brand CEO, so it, it's a really interesting. A couple of books about climate change, um, mm-hmm. uh, you know, just it's just a really really interesting mix of people and ideas, and I call it the greatest graduate school in the world because. People are, you know, they're basically paying me to learn uh, how they think, to watch how they think. So, yeah, I think that makes a ton of sense. That makes a ton of sense. So, one of the things I've noticed is that, uh, you know, there's a big difference in skill set from writing the book to promoting the book. You know, like that's just it's just two different parts of your brain. It feels like, and so I would think that working with someone like you, at the very least, would give sort of best practices on the promotion side too, right? Yeah, I, I have I have people I can recommend. Kirby, I don't know what it's like in your world, but in my world, if I find somebody who can do one thing well, it's a happy day. It's very <laughs> rare to find, to find people who do two things at the highest level or three. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, so a lot of the big ghostwriting shops offer uh, uh, book uh, writing, uh, uh, production, distribution, and marketing. And mm-hmm. I don't do that because I know that I'm, I, I'm good at one thing. Yeah. And all those other things are moving targets. They're always changing. I have phenomenal yeah. vendors I work with, so I'm able to okay. offer those services to my clients. So unlike a lot of ghosts, the final deliverable is not a manuscript and good luck. It's, <laughs> and now you're going to uh, work with these folks. You're, you'll, you'll choose the publisher. You'll choose the marketer. I've been doing this long enough to know who's great and who's not. Mm-hmm. And my clients only work with people who are, at great, who are great at being on, on every phase of the ball, every phase of That's the ball. That's awesome. Yeah, that makes sense. So tell me about tell me about independent publishing. Why do you think it's better for business people than getting book deals with like major houses? Because I think that's what everybody's like, oh, I want to get this big book deal. And sometimes that's not the best way. Yeah, you're exactly right. First of all, unless your name happens to be Oprah or Prince Harry or Beyonce, you're not getting a deal from New York. Uh, yeah. Because 99 times out of 100, they can tell when an author wants to use the book to build his or her business or practice, as opposed to going out there and flogging books. And today, the major publishers are really only interested in your marketing plan. They're not interested in the quality of your ideas. So we're not bringing much to the table. There's going to be an 18-month delay. You're going to have to do the dance and get a literary agent, a book proposal. And it'll probably end in tears unless you're already massively famous. Their attitude is don't come to us to help uh, you build your brand. Come to us when your brand is is already as big as Prince Harry's or Michelle Mm. Obama's. Good luck. Independent publishing, by contrast, when done right, gives you total control of every aspect of the process from the cover design to making all the money instead of the New York publisher making all the money to your yeah. ability to put out a second edition uh, a month after the first edition came out because somebody said, hey, why didn't you talk about such and such? Mm-hmm. Or a court case came down or a new deal happened or something like that. So indie publishing, uh, it used to be that independently published books looked different, smelled different, were marketed differently. Today, it's the same book designers and the same, uh, you know, printing houses that are creating the books as the ones for Simon and Schuster and Random House. So, and then if you go on Amazon, an independently published book gets the exact same treatment as that mm-hmm. of a book published by a major publisher. So, there is absolutely no reason for most people to waste time and effort and money on a book proposal and all that other stuff. Uh, and in, in, instead. You can have your book done. You can have it up in ninety days. And I, I've got mm-hmm. one vendor who can get a book up uh, as a physical, as a paperback, and as an ebook on uh, Kindle. Uh, you know, in 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 about forty five days for short money. Wow. So why would you even go to New York when you can have your book out in a couple of months and not yeah. have it be outdated? And and good luck trying to get your IP back if you want to uh, to do a different edition down the road. So yeah. No, I, everything you've just said is exactly what I've found to be true too. So uh, it makes total sense. But you just mentioned one final question for you. You, you um, just mentioned getting it done quickly. What's, what's the best way to make a book happen if you've got limited time? You've kind of addressed this, but I don't want to dive a little bit deeper. I'll give you my number and you give me a call. (laughs) (laughs) You know, I get my client's books done in four to five months. And that means that's true whether it's a 100, 150 page uh, business book or a 200 to 250 page memoir. And Mm -hmm. I cannot make a big imprint on my calendar, on my client's calendars. They don't have the time for people Mm -hmm. who want to do a book themselves without the help or expense of a ghostwriter. 
I have a course, and I think it's the only book course, book writing course available anywhere that is specifically for business people. It's okay. called the Best Earning Author Program, and you just go to bestearningauthor.com, and there you will see. You can, you can actually watch the first half hour. It's six hours and 20 minutes of me talking, so good luck. But, the, <laughs> but you can stand it. What you're going to learn is how to organize, uh, uh, be self-interviewed, or, or have someone interview you, uh, 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 create the material, get the chapters drafted, get it edited, get it published, marketed, and monetize wow. your book. It's all there. It's the most complete thing. It's everything. As you can tell, I love to talk about books and publishing. And typically, the course, people pay $7,000 for it. Kirby, your folks, uh, all they have to do is go on and they'll get it for $49.95. And, they, and, uh, and, and they'll learn absolutely everything they need to know about publishing. So I don't, I don't want to sound mercenary. What I do want to say is here's an option uh, for getting a book done easily, quickly, without uh, paying somebody like me. If you want to pay somebody like me, here's my cell. 617-543-3747. Operators are not standing by. I am. That's my phone. 617-543-3747. If you want to do a book, call me. If you want to hear more about the course, call me. Otherwise, go to bestearningauthor.com. And, uh, you know, because everybody's a best-selling author. I explain multiple ways to get bestseller status like for free uh, in no time. And I've got vendors. I've got a guy who can put you at the top of the Amazon list for about ten or twelve thousand, and I've got two vendors who can put you on the uh, Wall Street Journal list for sixty-five thousand dollars. So don't believe it when you see a book is a bestseller; it means nothing. What you really want to be is a best-earning author because you cannot put bestseller on a deposit slip. So <laughs> that's why I call it the Best Earning Author Program, BestEarningAuthor.com. And that's it. That is a great way to end this conversation, Michael. This is really, really cool. Uh, and I, this is really interesting. And having, like I said, just sort of lived through the, the process, having someone guide you through it, man, I think that just makes sense. So, Michael, thank you so much for taking the time. And I hope everybody comes and, and checks it out. Kirby, thanks for having me on. It was really my pleasure. Thank you. You bet. Well, that's going to wrap up this edition of Delivering Marketing Joy. We'll see you next time. Delivering Marketing Joy. Oh, 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 oh,